Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to talk about the continuity axiom. So remember that we've been discussing the different assumptions that we make about our actors in our game theoretical models. We've said that they need to follow four preference rules. We've covered the first three, so now we're on to continuity. What is continuity? Well, suppose I preferred x to y and y to z, and we'll say that this preference relation is transitive, so I also prefer x to z then there exists a unique p in between 0 and 1, such that I'm indifferent between the lottery where I get x with probability p and z with probability 1 minus p, and getting a lottery where you get y with certainty. So this is a little bit of a dense uh, definition here, so before we look at a concrete example, let's try to unpack the information here. Essentially what's going on is that we have three outcomes, x, y, and z. x is the best outcome, z is the worst outcome, y is in between those two. And there is going to be some lottery where you get your best outcome with positive probability, so that's this p times x, and your worst outcome with some probability, that's the z times 1 minus p. And you're going to be indifferent between that lottery and getting your middle outcome y with certainty. So to look at a concrete example, We've been talking about winning a million dollars and winning zero dollars and dying a painful death and the preference relation over that. And you know we've looked at these expected utility values in the past, which signify that this person prefers winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars to dying a painful death. And we just looked at that using three, two, and one as the utility values. And so what I would like to look at is a couple of lotteries using those utility values. So in this first lottery, you win a million dollars with probability one half and you die a painful death with probability one half. In the second lottery, you win nothing with certainty. So that's a degenerate lottery where you get the win nothing outcome with certainty. And I'm gonna claim that someone with utility values three, two, and one would be indifferent between these two lotteries. And the way we see that is by simply replacing these outcome terms with the utility values that we've associated with them. So instead of $1 million, we replace that with a three. Instead of death, we replace that with one. And instead of $0, we replace that with a two. And I've done that here. And if we just do the simple math here, so 0 0.5 times three plus 0 0.5 times one is equal to two, and one times two is equal to two. So the expected utilities for both of these lotteries is equal, and therefore this person is indifferent between these two lotteries. Now, one thing that should be pretty obvious is that this is an abnormal person. Most people would have a very, very high value here before they are indifferent between these two lotteries, rather than being willing to accept death half the time just to win a million dollars the other half of the time. And so one thing that I'd like to ask you is what is your p-value necessary for you to be indifferent between these two lotteries? So if I replaced it like this, where you win a million dollars with probability p and you die with probability 1 minus p for the first lottery and you get nothing for the second lottery, essentially you just go on living your normal life, I want to know what value p, for what value p are you indifferent between these two lotteries? Now, as long as you can tell me what value of p that makes you indifferent between these two lotteries is, then your preferences are going to be continuous for this particular situation. And I think what we're going to see is that most people are going to respond with essentially continuous preferences. Now, keep in mind that this p-value could be very, very high. 0.5 was actually a fairly low value, but it could be as high as you know 0.9999999999, where you're essentially, in that case, winning a million dollars with virtual certainty and dying painful death with a very, very, very low degree of probability. But even if that's the case, your preferences are still continuous. So what I'd like you to do now is, if you're watching this on YouTube, to go ahead and go into the comment section, which is just below the video, and type in whatever the value of P is that would make you indifferent between these two lotteries. And even if you're not watching on YouTube, I'd like you to just stop for a second and think about this, and just you know see if your preferences are continuous here, and go ahead and just write down to yourself what value of P would make you indifferent between these two lotteries. Now, I think that this exercise will show us that continuous uh, or continuity over preferences really isn't that much of a strange expectation. It's, it's pretty straightforward, and I think pretty simple. Um, but what we will, we will notice if we look through the comment section is a bunch of different answers for that value P. So this could maybe cause problems, you might think, in that we can't just assign numbers like this for, for everyone. So this is just 3, 2, and 1. These numbers wouldn't cover everybody because we're going to be seeing very different values of p. And so you might be wondering what we're going to be doing with that in the future. And while I don't want to get to exactly what we're going to be doing in this series of lectures, that will be for the next series of lectures, suffice it to say that we can, instead of looking at numbers like this, we can replace them with what we call exogenous variables, which here are just letters x, y, and z, where we have this rule x is greater than y is greater than z. So essentially this person still prefers winning a million dollars to winning zero dollars to dying a painful death. And by doing this, we'll, we will essentially be able to solve for everyone's very different values that they have for this. And we'll be seeing that they have different values just based off of 
um, what we see in the comments section. But nevertheless, despite all of those different values, by making these games uh, have exogenous variables for the utility values, we can very quickly solve for everybody uh, with just doing a little bit more work than we did before. But again, that's just a bit of a teaser into what we're going to be doing in the future. We're not going to get to that until the next series of lectures. But to end things here, I want to talk about one last thing, one issue with continuity, and that's what we call lexicographic preferences. And continuity actually prevents expected utility from working uh, with a very specific type of lexicographic preference. And in the next video, we'll talk about what lexicographic preferences are and what this particular type of lexicographic preference preferences is that uh, runs expected utility theory. So join me for that video and I will see you then.